the Arizona Signal Watcher DXing video blog, Episode 6, an RTL SDR based AM broadcast band receiver. After buying my first $10 RTL SDR dongle in spring of 2014, and this is it, I got back into radio DXing. But what really got me uh, going was about a month later when I bought a Hammett Up up converter. Now, there are other uh, up converters on the market. This is the one that I happen to uh, use, but uh, there's also the Spyverter, um, and there are some other ones. And up converters uh, like this are typically less than $50. And the deal is, since the RTL SDR dongle only covers down to 24 megahertz, and the peak sensitivity is above 100 megahertz, an up converter uses a mixing oscillator to up convert lower frequency signals into the useful range of the RTL SDR. So by the time I purchased a Hammett Up, it was using a 120 megahertz oscillator as opposed to the 100 megahertz oscillator it originally used. So that means a 1 megahertz signal would appear at 126 megahertz, a 10 megahertz signal would appear at 135 megahertz, etc. Then the offset can be set into the uh, SDR software package you're using, and then it'll read out the correct frequency for you. Now my early radio DXing interests were AM broadcast band and short wave, and those are exactly the frequencies that are missed by a stock RTL SDR, and thus the up converter can give you access to those frequencies. So after playing around with those uh, RTL SDR dongles and up converters, uh, I came up with this receiver for the AM broadcast band. Here's the RTL SDR dongle taken out of its case. Um, this is uh, one of the newer ones, uh, a $20 one uh, that has a temperature compensated oscillator which um, dramatically decreases the frequency shift that was kind of a problem with the uh, original ones. Um, and it uses the better second generation R820T2 tuner. And so that uh, tends to work better as well. Now the up converter does have a little bit of frequency drift on its own, but still much, much better than the original RTL SDR dongle. So the up converter here is the biggest uh, component in the box. Now if you've watched my series on the Conti Superloop, you may remember that that antenna design has a very low gain due to the electrical resistance added to the antenna to give a cardioid reception pattern. Plus the upconversion process causes about a 10 decibel loss of signal by itself. Because I wanted to power everything off of the USB port of the computer that I'd be using uh, the SDR software on, um, that limits you to 5 volts. And so you really can't get more than about 20 or 25 decibels of amplification uh, off a single amp at that voltage. Um, most of the uh, higher amplification uh, requires uh, 12 volts typically. So I have actually two preamps in the signal chain. So the first one, uh, this is the so-called LNA for HF, which is designed by an amateur radio operator from Croatia, uh, call sign 9A4QV. Now the HF in the name stands for high frequency, which is the 3 megahertz to 30 megahertz range, uh, which is um, where uh, much of ham radio is. But it also goes below that down um, to the AM broadcast band and below. Now the 30 megahertz lower limit for this amplifier can actually be circumvented with a little bit of uh, modification on the circuit board there, but the Hammett Up uh, filters out frequencies below, uh, above about 50 megahertz anyway, so uh, that really isn't necessary to modify the preamp. So after the signal goes through the first preamp and through the Hammett Up, I still need more amplification, and that's uh, this uh, VHF preamp here, uh, which gives another about 20-25 dB of gain. And that works because after the signal goes through the up converter, it's no longer an HF or AM broadcast band signal. It's a VHF signal above 125 megahertz. And then we finally go into the dongle and then off to the computer. Now there is one little thing that I added here. Turns out that these the amplification that I'm using is actually just a bit too much. And so I usually have a 3 decibel or 6 decibel um, 
attenuator in the signal chain as well. That's a little bit sloppy and that may probably should be swapped in position with the uh, second amplifier, but uh, that's really not, uh, not such a big deal. Now it's worth noting that depending on the antenna that you're using, you might not need two uh, preamps or maybe you're going to power this uh, separately from the USB port and maybe you want to uh, just power it for 12 volts and then you might just use one amp. And the other thing that you can do is the RTL SDR dongles have built-in amplification that you can access from the SDR software. Although once you start turning that up um, into pretty significant amounts of gain, uh, I find that it uh, tends to degrade the signal too much and so there, there's limits on how high you want to turn that up. But if you only need one preamp, um, you know, this, this is about a hundred dollar receiver. So the main point here again is the AM broadcast band. If you want to spend more than a hundred dollars, you can get an SDR with better specs and one that you may not have to deal with all this other stuff. And that's especially true because the RTL SDR dongle is only an eight bit system, eight bit analog to digital converter. But that's sometimes enough and I'm going to explain why. Now I'm going to use the US mainland as an example here, but this can apply to uh, many other locations as well. So the issues with having only 8 bits um, are that it's easier to overload the receiver when using a broadband antenna where there are some particularly strong stations because you just don't have that extra headroom that you would get um, from having more bits and thus a, a larger uh, signal range. And the other issue is that one of the popular aspects of AM broadcast band DXing is to try to get very distant stations across the oceans. Um, so from western United States trying to pick up signals from across the Pacific in Asia or if you're in the eastern United States picking up signals from Europe and Africa across the Atlantic Ocean. Now those uh, stations are generally on 9 kilohertz spacing so um, they mostly don't directly compete with the domestic stations that are on 10 kilohertz spacing, but you typically might be picking out, uh, trying to pick out weak signals from overseas, and those are competing with much stronger domestic signals. In the first case, um, if you really do have strong local stations, uh, you may very well need a 12-bit or 16-bit SDR, and you just have to eat the extra cost to get that, uh, especially if you're in or near a big city, uh, the eight bits just may not be enough. But if you're in a more rural location, then that might not be a problem. And also, you might just have one uh, particularly strong local station, and in that case, a band stop filter uh, may be uh, a better solution. And in fact, I have local stations on 1450 and 1490 kilohertz, and so um, I've put together a passive filter using uh, capacitors and uh, inductors. Now I'm going to do uh, some videos later on uh, that uh, illustrate and give some details on how you build filters like this. Uh, so uh, look for those later. Uh, but for now, just suffice it to say, this is uh, one way that you can uh, diminish local stations uh, so that you can still use a decent amount of gain to pick up other stations. So for the transoceanic signals, unless you're at a very remote location or maybe on the coast with a very directional antenna, the limiting factor is mostly going to be signal splatter from the adjacent domestic stations that you have to deal with. And if that's the case, well you can't really do much to um, amplify one frequency and diminish the immediately adjacent one. And so in that case you're usually stuck with the interference no matter what SDR you're using. Now it's worth noting that the RTL SDR has more than enough bandwidth to cover the AM broadcast band, so that's not really an issue. The, the more expensive um, SDRs often cover a larger frequency range, but that's not really needed for AM broadcast band. Um, there are also inexpensive 8-bit uh, SDRs, and they use uh, built-in upconversion or direct sampling to get frequencies below the normal uh, 24 megahertz uh, lower range of the RTL SDR. And these are usually advertised as covering 100 kilohertz to 1.7 gigahertz. Um, however, they don't seem to work nearly as well 
as just a regular RTL SDR plus an upconverter like the Hammett Up or the Spyverter. Now one other advantage uh, of the RTL SDR um, is that it has the broadest software support. Many of the expensive um, high-end SDRs require proprietary software and that often just works under Windows, although sometimes it will work uh, under other operating systems. Um, and so if you don't use Windows, if you use a Mac or maybe even Linux, uh, that may not be so good. Now, the high-end SDRs do have other features that may make them attractive. Uh, in addition, uh, for long wave and short wave, where um, you may have a station that's more or less by itself uh, on an isolated frequency, well, in that case, the dynamic range that you get from the 12-bit or 16-bit systems can be very useful because you may have a strong signal somewhere in your band pass, but you also may be wanting to pick up a very weak signal um, uh, from a, a very distant shortwave station or long wave station. Still, if you're interested in trying out an SDR for the AM broadcast band, you don't necessarily need to go right out and spend hundreds of dollars on a high-end SDR. As an example, I've logged over 700 AM broadcast band stations in three years at this location, uh, including many from across the Pacific, and this has been accomplished using either this exact receiver or an even less capable system that I started with.